Hi everyone, my name is Doug Brooks and I'll be covering the transmission and the signs and symptoms portions of the influenza virus. And we'll begin with the transmission. The influenza virus is primarily found on the large particles of respiratory secretions from an infected person. The large particles only remain suspended for a short period of time and travel a distance of about six feet. Consequently, close contact with the infected person's respiratory secretions, like those from coughing or sneezing, is the primary mode of transmission. Studies have shown that the influenza virus can survive on surfaces for two to eight hours. However, contact with infected surfaces is not a well-established mode of transmission. There's also some evidence that the influenza virus can be transmitted via the transocular route. The incubation period which is the period of time between exposure to an infection and the appearance of the first symptoms is about one to four days. And most people infected with influenza can begin transmitting the virus to others a day before symptoms develop and up to a week after becoming sick. Infectiousness usually peaks within 24 to 48 hours and continues for an average of five days. After infectiousness peaks, it rapidly declines, but may continue for up to 10 days or more. In children and individuals with weakened immune systems may pass on the virus for an even longer period. Consequently, the CDC recommends that people stay home for at least 24 hours after their fever is gone to cut down on transmission. In summary, Influenza is primarily transmitted via respiratory secretions and can be transmitted to others before the development of symptoms. Infectiousness usually peaks within 24 to 48 hours of illness and then it rapidly declines. And the CDC recommends that people with influenza stay home for at least 24 hours after the disappearance of their fever. All right, so now we're gonna go over the signs and symptoms of influenza. Keep in mind that with influenza, at least, many of the signs and symptoms can go either way. Uh, for example, nasal dis discharge can be described as a symptom, but it can also be observed by a healthcare professional. So I tried to break it down as best I could, but just keep that in mind as we go through it. One of the characteristics of influenza is that it usually begins very abruptly. In some cases, it's so abrupt that the individual can remember exactly when it started. The main sign of influenza is fever, while the primary symptoms are a headache, myalgia, and malaise. The fever can range from about 100 to 104 degrees and may be accompanied by chills. It typically lasts two to five days, which is usually longer than the 24 to 48 hours for other respiratory viruses. And fevers are often higher in children than adults. Influenza often, often brings a, a frontal or a retroorbital headache and can be quite severe. Myalgia, which is muscle pain, is common and can range from mild to severe. Malaise is severe fatigue that often prevents patients from performing their normal daily activities or going to work. And most patients will need extra sleep and some will even be bedridden. Typical secondary symptoms include a non-productive cough, nasal discharge, and sore throat. A non-productive cough and other respiratory symptoms may initially be minimal, but frequently get worse as the illness progresses. And the sore throat usually lasts three to five days. Gastrointestinal illness, such as vomiting and diarrhea, usually doesn't occur in adults with influenza, but can occur in children 10 to 20% of the time. So the stomach flu or gastroenteritis is not caused by the influenza virus. The most common influenza complication for adults is pneumonia, and in children, it's otitis media, pneumonia, and asthma complications. So in summary, influenza presents with characteristic abruptness. The main sign is fever, and the primary symptoms are headache, myalgia, and malaise. A sore throat, nasal discharge, and non-productive cough may be present early on, but typically get worse as the illness progresses. Vomiting and diarrhea usually do not occur with influenza, and the stomach flu is not caused by the influenza virus.
patients without complications usually improve over two to five days but sometimes it takes longer.